Russell, you're aware of the uh, the fact that you'll be playing tomorrow in front of a uh, sure a hostile Leeds United crowd and no Cardiff fans. How do you feel? Oh, it'd be unusual, that's for sure, Rob. Um, our fans have been fantastic on the road, so no doubt we're gonna we're gonna miss that. It'd be a little bit strange, a little bit unusual, really, to be having no fans in um, in the stadium. So, uh, but it is what it is, and you know we will have to deal with that accordingly. Do you understand the club backing the fans in this? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, I think we give them something like 2,000 tickets when they came here with no restrictions, and I think we were offered 250 initially, and then I think it went to 500 initially with a lot of restrictions, and in the end, you know, supporters' trust and supporters' club were very unhappy with that, and. We've backed that. And, uh, I mean, obviously, you've seen Cardiff for years. Uh, and Their fans in the past had a reputation. Does that still carry with them? Because there's been no trouble in, for years and years, frankly. Well, well, I think that's the strange thing about it all, Rob. I don't think there has been any trouble between the two clubs for a long, long time. So we didn't feel the need to place any restrictions on them. So... I think we wanted the same the other way, which it has been for the last three years. So, I don't know. I think it's something that the two clubs need to sort out. You will miss them, but does it uh, give you an extra incentive? Yeah, it does, because, I mean, we'll, we'll be going into that stadium with none of our fans there, so we're going to be determined, and we want a response anyway after our defeat, so we're going to be t determined to try and get the right result. For the, the ones who can't be there? Of course, yeah. Does it matter with players? I mean... They're professionals, so they've got, to do their, they've got to do their jobs. But look, in any situation, it's, it, if, if you've got a, an amount of support behind you, it's, go, it's going to help, Rob, isn't it? There's, there's no doubt about that. There's no good me trying to say, no, 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 it makes no difference. Um, the fact that we haven't got anybody there is, 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 is detrimental in, in many ways. So um, we're disappointed, obviously, but it is what it is and we'll deal with the situation and we'll do it professionally and we'll, we'll work hard to get a positive result. Injuries from Monday, other than broken hearts? Mm, yeah, yeah, a few of them. Um, just one or two niggles, really. With, with players that we've had to be careful with because they've they've had like two games in in three days, so there is one or two little problems. But we're hopefully we'll be okay. There'll be no Revel. He obviously, he came off, so I can I can tell you that. How long will he be up for? Do you know? Um, well, he, he's he's not in the same situation he was when he did it in the first place. It's it, it's a Grade One, so. It may be it may be between ten and fourteen days. He's not up for the rest of the campaign as well, you No, 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 no. He could be back for the last couple of games. Obviously Monday was a setback, but away from home your form has been more terrific, yeah, yeah, I don't think is it six? Something like that. I mean we've been very consistent, very resilient, and we need that kind of response, which I'm sure we will get. What do you make of Leeds? Very open, very open, very good. Got some very good individuals going forward. They can score goals. And I think their last game typified that against Wolves. It was 4-3, where, you know, they've certainly got a goal in them. They can go forward and create against the best teams. I think they've, have they drawn or beaten um, Bournemouth? I think they've beaten Ipswich. So they've shown that they can beat some of the better teams in the league and score goals against them. But also, I think, maybe, at times, slightly vulnerable defensively. And to be honest, it's two clubs in the Championship who have got headlines this season for more than just football reasons. I mean, the cynic might say two circus clubs playing each other. How do you see it? Huh. I hope you don't include us in that, Rob. Um, you know what I'm saying. No, I mean, clubs that have probably had the problems over over recent years from for one reason or another seem to make the headlines from time to time um, 
yeah, I mean, listen, it's not for me to say how any clubs run, um, but from our point of view, um, I think we're more stabilised than, than than most clubs um, around. In, in even in the even in the championship, Rob, I think we, we've shown um, a certain amount of stability. But there's always background music, isn't there? You've got another court case now. I know it doesn't affect you materially, but there is always, as I've often said, you background music at this club. It's something you've got to get used to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, the, there are certain things I can't control, or or what go on, and. And, and need to be done or investigated or or brought to the forefront for, for one reason or another. But again, it's, it's not a football issue from my point of view. I mean, I have to concentrate my full focus is on the team. How much are you looking forward now to next season? Uh, you can write this one off, but how much of your sort of focus on team selection and planning is about being prepared for next season? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's coming. That's coming to play in in recent games. I've been obviously very keen to get the likes of Joe Mason back in, Rob, and and, and to see him before the end of the season, and and one or two of you know the, our, our younger players. Joe's had more pitch time. Joe Rao, so um, the, the little things like that. There's not an enormous amount I can do, but what there has been there to do. I've tried to do in terms of, you know, making sure that I see as many players as I can. Pilkington and Dicker Choi play an under-21 game today. Scott's going to go up to watch them. Um, ben Turner's also um, close as well. He will play. He will play in a game on Monday, Rob. So it's important for me to get them back and, and to have a look see what sort of shape they're in before the end of the season. So probably Pilks is the, is the closest going forward. And I say going forward from probably Tuesday onwards. And you've seen, obviously, Kevin Jones score on his debut for Bournemouth. Is he in your plans for next season? Yeah, look, they're all, they're all... You need that crystal ball, Rob, don't you, really? But they're all in my plans. They're all in my plans, That the ones we've got here other than probably a, a few that are out of contract. Um, but it's, it, it's, it, it, the football world is, is such a world that people will, will come in and clubs will come in inevitably and, and, and make offers and bids for your club. Um, and then, you know, it becomes a financial issue. And it's whether we decide that, you know, we're still going forward, whatever they offer, or whether we accept that offer at the end of the day. But... We're not the only club in that situation. Most clubs are, yes. uh, unless it's Manchester United or, or Chelsea that will just turn the nose up. But I'm thinking in his scenario, maybe in Matt Conley's as well, but maybe slightly different, but, you know, Bournemouth or Watford get up. Yeah. Would either of them want to come back if there's a possibility of movement? Um, well, the fact of the matter is they're contracted to this football club the decision that would then have to be made if two clubs came to uh, an agreement that su suited both parties, wouldn't they? That's, that's all I could say on that, really. Um, I'm just on that. Uh, Declan John, do you know how he's doing at Barnsley? Yes. Getting reports and yes. Again, I can't imagine he was a business decision to allow to go on. Well, that, was, that was football. Yes, that was football. Yeah, absolutely. He needed to get some games. I've had one report on him, Rob. Um, and actually spoke yesterday and I'm looking for another report in the next 24 hours on him. He's doing fine, yeah, yeah, he started fine. He's another one who you would think, given the time he's got left on his contract and yes. his, his youth, is someone you'd look to? Of course. Yeah, no, 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 he's, 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 he's not something, somebody I'm contemplating losing in the summer. That's, I think that's what you're trying to ask me there, isn't it? Um, no, I'm, I'm more intrigued in that, I'm sorry for a few weeks, but I'm, I'm more intrigued about um, would, he, would he not, and I'm just thinking aloud, would he not have benefited from being here now to play in games if you're looking at a team for next season? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, I can see what you're saying, but it's all about position as well, isn't it? I feel like we've, got, we've had Scott Malone, we've had Fabio back fit and Peltier, 
and I think his games here would, even though I would have got him some football, would have been more restricted here. Whereas he's playing 90 minutes game in and game out for Barnsley, which I think at this stage of his career is more useful. Would you not agree? You're the manager. <laughs> yeah. That's when they started. Do you feel like you, you have been, before then, starting to, to settle on uh, a way and a style that you want your team to, to play, not just this season, but what we're saying into next season as well? Yeah, I, I think there was, there, there was more consistency. I said before, haven't I? The worst thing is for a football manager is that inconsistency. And we started to do that, I felt, over the last kind of dozen games or more. Um, and because of that, I think individually, players were, were understanding their roles better, their responsibilities better as an individual and collectively understanding it a little bit better. There was frustration, but there were elements of the supporters, not, not all, I'm yeah. sure, on Monday. Is it a case of maybe a message from you to, to, to bear with the situation and, and how it's developing in the long run? Yeah, look, I've always said everybody's entitled to an opinion, and, and I think that's the way it should be. Um, but it, And I've always tried to explain that, you know, as we're going through a transition, um, is that there will be ups and downs. There haven't been too many downs recently. It's been reasonably positive, I've felt. But, uh, yeah, yeah, the last game was a little bit of a setback because I thought we were doing quite well in the first period and arguably should have been in front. But we've allowed that to get get away from us. And, and probably what disappointed me most is, is not to go 1-0 down because it was a very well-taken goal, but to go two down and then three down really killed us. Where, whereas I think when we have gone one nil down over the last five, six, seven, eight weeks, we've, we've come back to nick a draw or to even go on and win it. So that, that's important that we re-establish that as well.